Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Yu Hao Zhang, and I'm a PhD student um, in the, um, the Stanford Natural Language Processing Group. And I'm very glad uh, to be here. Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure why I lose my title slide, but I'm really glad to be here today uh, to talk about our uh, something that we've been working on over the last year, uh, which is called Stanford NLP, uh, our uh, new Python natural language processing uh, library that's designed uh, to process many human languages. Uh, so first of all, uh, before everything, uh, I'd like to uh, thank our great collaborators uh, who's not here today. Uh, they include like Peng Qi, uh, Jason Bolton, uh, Yu Hui Zhang, and Professor Chris Manning from the Stanford NLP group. Okay, so um, if you're familiar with NLP, you'll know that uh, there are already many uh, natural language processing libraries out there. Uh, for example, for Java, there is uh, this core NLP library that's produced by our Stanford group. And for Python, uh, there are uh, NLTK or Spacey. Uh, so the question is, uh, why creating another new NLP library? So it turns out that uh, most of the existing NLP libraries uh, still re highly rely on uh, handcrafted rules and patterns. Uh, uh, for example, uh, there are usually a lot of rules and dictionaries in the tokenization or lemmatization components in these uh, NLP libraries. And this, this has many issues. Uh, for example, uh, the use of these rules and patterns has limited existing NLP pipelines to several major languages, such as English uh, or French. And secondly, uh, the use of these rules and patterns uh, makes adaptation to new domains uh, much more difficult uh, for these NLP libraries. Right? Uh, for example, to give you more idea, and here are the tokenization rules used in the Stanford Core NLP English tokenizer, which uh, most of which are actually uh, written by Professor Chris Manning over the last decade. So now you get an idea of how difficult it is to craft all these rules and, and patterns. So to overcome these limitations, um, we've created this Stanford NLP library, and it has the following properties. So first of all, uh, it features native Python implementations of all of its modules, which is supported by the great PyTorch uh, framework. And second of all, it features fully neural network pipeline for natural language analysis, uh, ranging from tokenization to part of suite tagging to dependency parsing. And thirdly, um, it was created uh, with a fully uh, data-driven fashion uh, that makes domain adaptation much easier. And, and lastly, uh, together with this library, uh, we ship uh, pre-trained neural network models that supports over 50 human languages, and the number is still growing. So to make things easier to understand, let's break down the system and take a look at each neural component individually. So in the current version of the library, there are five uh, main neural network components. So first of all, uh, we have the tokenizer and sentence segmenter which takes the input text and split that into tokens uh, and sentences. And next, we have a multi-word token expander that learns uh, to take input, a token, and learns to expand that into multiple syntactic words that makes syn syn a syntactic analysis uh, um, and many languages easier. And next, we have a part of speech and morphological features tagger that learns to assign a syntactic role to each word. And next, we have a lemmatizer that learns to take a word and produce the lemma form of the word. And lastly, we have the dependency parser that learns to construct a tree structure which represents the grammatical structure of the sentence. Let's start with the tokenizer and sentence segmenter. So unlike uh, many existing uh, NLP libraries uh, which use rules for tokenization, our library models the tokenization and sentence segmentation problems as a character sequence tagging problem. Uh, and then we realize it with a very lightweight neural network model. So the neural network model takes a character sequence as input and then maps that into a series of character embeddings. And then an LSTM network was run on top of all these uh, character embeddings to learn contextual representation for them. After which, uh, the LSTM state was taken out and try to predict uh, whether we want to split a token, uh, split the input into a token or a sentence at the current uh, location. So this enables, uh, enables us to create the tokenization or the tokenizer module in a fully data-driven fashion uh, and is end-to-end -end trainable. Okay, next, 
Let's take a look at the multi-word token expander and the, and the lemmatizer. So the multi-word token expander, uh, uh, we can recall that it, it, it takes the word as input and expand that into multiple different syntactic words uh, to make the syntactic analysis easier. And the lemmatizer learns to produce the lemma form of a word. So at the core, they're both modeled as neural sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning. Um, so for example, for the multi-word token expander, uh, to, to, increase, uh, to improve the performance, we first use a dictionary to catch frequent mappings from a token to its uh, frequent syntactic, work, uh, sy syntactic word mappings uh, using dictionary. And set secondly, if the, if the dictionary lookup fails, uh, we will then use a neural encoder-decoder architecture that learns to decoder the, character, uh, to decoder the input token into a character sequence that represents the syntactic words. So the example here shows that the model uh, can convert the input German token im uh, into two different uh, German words im dim, which makes the syntactic analysis of uh, German easier. And the same architecture is used for the lemmatization as well. And next, next let's look at the dependency parser, uh, which uh, takes uh, an input uh, sequence of words or sentences as input and learns to produce a tree structure that represents the syntactic structure of the sentence. So to do that, uh, we, we implement the neural deep biofine architecture. And to make it easier to understand, so this model takes uh, the input uh, words as input and use a LSTM uh, to convert that into LSTM states. And next, uh, from the LSTM states, a head representation and a dependent representation was learned for each word. And next, um, the head representation and the dependent representation of each pair of words are combined uh, with and compared with the biofine attention layer to produce a scalar score that estimates how likely the two words are dependent on each other. And at the end, all interword scores are, combi are combined uh, to form a tree structure that represents the syntactic or the grammatical uh, structure of the sentence. OK. And lastly, uh, we use the same biofine structure over recurrent networks uh, for the part of speech and morphological features tagger to produce the syntactic roles and morphological features of a word. OK. So how does this pipeline with neural networks work? Um, as I've mentioned, um, a major advantage in our library is that all the underlying architectures are actually human language agnostic which means that it naturally generalizes to all different kinds of human languages. So to show that, uh, we train our system and run it on a data set of 57 languages from the 2018 Universal Dependency Shared Task. And here is how it performs. So it achieves very competi competitive scores compared to uh, the top systems in each of the benchmark scores that we compared against. And here, it shows um, how our system can be run on different languages to produce syntactic annotations following the same universal dependency schema. It turns out that the data-driven approach that we're using in this library not only allows us uh, or allows the library to, generate, uh, to generalize to different languages, but also to generalize to different domains. And with that ability, we have actually created a new biomedical NLP pipeline that's created for analyzing biomedical text with high accuracy and ease of use. So we've trained this biomedical pipeline and evaluated on the craft uh, biomedical publication data set. And when we compare it with all existing systems in Java and Python, uh, we find that it, it achieves the state-of-the-art uh, performance on all of the benchmarks that we test against. And also, this allows us to create a new clinical pipeline that specializes in, in analyzing clinical text. And here, this example shows how our clinical NLP pipeline uh, can be run on a radiology reports uh, to produce um, NLP annotations. Uh, for example, here, the system can really look at the report and annotate different kind of entities, including anatomies or clinical observations. OK. So I want to mention a few other highlights of the library. Uh, first of all, we created this library uh, to have a really easy to use and simple inter interface for everyone. So here, it shows how the system can be downloaded uh, and the models can be downloaded and run in just a few lines of Python code. 
Oops. Uh, I think I lost another slide. Uh, but, but basically, uh, so what's coming next for this library is that we're going to expand it to 83 different languages uh, in the next release. And we're going to include uh, some other new functionalities, such as name entity recognitions, and achieve state of the art results on them. So with that, uh, I think I'll conclude the talk today. And uh, you can really find us on GitHub for this library. And welcome to join our growing community. Thank you very much.